Hello sisters, I'm Dr. Cindy Pagano and this is the Juicy Goddess Project, Mastering Menopause Magnificently. And I have the greatest honor of having Brigitte Mars here, who is a world-renowned herbalist um, who learned from her grandmother. She's been practicing for 50 years. She's the author of 14 books. She has a radio station, um, a radio show on KGNU. Uh, she teaches internationally. Um, and she is our local icon here in Boulder um, and world renowned. Uh, I so admire her, her work. I have the greatest respect for her. She is so wise and has amazing wisdom to share. And so I hope you enjoy our talk. Thank you so much. Welcome. It was such an honor. Thank you, Cindy. And I probably didn't cover everything. So what else do you do? Oh, that's plenty. I write books. I have a private practice. And I'm just really grateful I teach it in Europa. And I'm really committed to getting people to try plant medicine first. You know, we're so quick to just go and sign up for a lifetime of pharmaceuticals. And there may be something that we can do with our diet, with our lifestyle techniques, with plant medicine that is going to nurture us and at the same time, nurture the planet because somewhere we're promoting, you know, fields and forests that are uh, habitats for pollinators like bees and butterflies and birds. And um, so I'm really committed because as we heal ourselves, we want to work with nature mm -hmm. and not contribute to her destruction, which is so rampant these days. It is. And um, I love what you said about nourish because I find during menopause, um, so many women come into menopause already being depleted, hugely depleted. They give, they have three uh, or four full-time jobs, working, taking care of the family, uh, looking beautiful and staying fit and healthy, and then their relationships with their, you know, partners and they give, but they their cups are depleted. So, what suggestions would you have? Is gosh, gosh, the person I would want to ask the most uh, for your special medicines and knowledge. Thank you. Well, menopause is not a disease, and it's a passage of life. Mm -hmm. And so, I like to suggest that. You know, when we get to that menopausal time, it's really time to start thinking about what is it that we as women wanted to do in our lives that maybe we never had time to do because we were committed to raising children and starting the company and being an assistant to our manager and our families and all of that. The, as you say, the many, many jobs that we do that are very full time. So I think it's a great idea to make a list of, you know, what is it that you still want to do in your life? Um, I know when I went to menopause, I, this sounds like a small thing, but it's like, I want to learn to crochet. I'm going to take a class. And I'm really big on handicrafts, and I think that we have a lot of senior citizens that really are not doing things with their hands, and that doing things with your hands helps to keep your brain active, the connection between the hands and the mind. And, you know, if all we're doing is, you know, nibbling on chips and using the remote control, that's not enough. And so knit one, purl two, origami, paper folding, sketching, playing an instrument. Um, because I think we're all, you know, concerned. We don't want to end up having dementia or not using our brains. Absolutely. So keeping our hands active is really important. And, you know, I think menopause is also a time where we realize that we don't know how long we're going to be here on the planet, most of us. Um, you know, it may be a few years, it may be a few decades, um, but wouldn't it be nice to uh, create things of beauty to leave behind? I actually have a commitment that I want to make a, a, vel a velvet quilt um, for each of my grandchildren and also crochet something for each of them because when you make something and you infuse that love, it doesn't end up in a yard sale uh, because it's got something special and that might live on longer than you. So I'm big on crafts and making a list of what it is you want to do in your life. Um, and I think we, it's never too late to keep learning. I think very often we start saying things like, oh, I'm too old for that, or you can't teach an, an old dog new tricks. And those are nails in the coffin. Oh, they are. You know, so if you keep life exciting and you keep learning and you keep doing things, you know, learn feng shui. So another thing, 
speaking of feng shui, because it's, um, you know, I'm heavy into spring cleaning right now. You know, you also want to look at what kind of, you know, mess am I leaving for my descendants or whoever's going to end up putting things away. Like, do I really need to buy more books or do oh, I have a lot of books to read already? Do I need to buy more fabric or art project kits? So maybe it's time to like start doing them. Um, and you know, do we have a will? I think these are also important things. Um, so those are a few of the lifestyle things I'd suggest, but you know, a lot of the problems with menopause that women described, we're always looking how we can change our hormones. And it's important to realize that our hormones are meant to change. Just like we started menarche when we started our menstrual cycle, you know, it's a dance of hormones. And so don't expect your libido to be like it was when you were 20. I mean, really, who would want it to be? Yeah. Uh, and so it becomes more about quality than quantity. Um, so I think, it, you know, when we talk about hormones, rather than thinking we need to take a drug to give ourselves more hormones, we should really be looking at how can we help our livers to better break down hormones. And so I think that a lot of these conditions like hot flashes and emotional uproar um, really has to do with a stagnant liver that can't process the hormones. And so simple things we can do to help our livers is eat more green leafy vegetables, um, in, use more of the sour flavor like lemon and water, lime and water. Excellent in the morning, yeah. lemon and water. I, do, I try to do it every day, eat more berries and tart apples. Let the sour flavor in moderation be an ally. And that's not a big part of the American diet. I think we have a proverb like, if life gives you lemons, get the tequila. And, you know, <laughs> but sometimes just a little sour is really a good thing. And um, don't be so quick to, you know, have someone prescribe drugs for you because a lot of the drugs that were prescribed turned out to not be doing what they claimed they were going to do. And they actually ended up increasing women's risks of different yes, types of cancers. Are, yeah. So um, I feel strongly that there are many things we can do with our diet, our lifestyle and uh, botanicals that can improve our health and some of the concerns we have with menopause. Absolutely. I mean, that's why I wanted to talk to you. I, there are so many, so many women even taking the bioidentical hormones, but that is hormone replacement. And actually our bodies um, manufacture all the hormones we need. They're at a reduced rate, but in the tissues of our body, our brain, our adrenal glands. So again, to take something from the outside down regulates or stops our production in our own bodies so we become dependent on it and there is nothing bioidentical out there but the most natural we can get is plants and you are a master of that and you brought some things and like I would love to know what you have found mm -hmm. through your uh, menopause experience that you know has an enlivened you and well, I also just want to caution people because we need some cholesterol to make hormones. Yes. And we have a nation of people who, you know, oh, you have high cholesterol, and then they go on a drug for the rest of their life, and that might deplete their ability to make their own hormones. And so, you know, if you have high cholesterol, maybe think about eating less red meat, less dairy, eating a more plant-based diet, um, and, uh, you know, eating things like tart apples, um, but we cholesterol is not necessarily the enemy that it's made no. out to be. And also sugar, like the insulin um, levels. If your the blood sugar spikes, then the body lays down cholesterol in the vessels to protect them. So the body actually makes more cholesterol. So balancing the blood sugar is key for that. But I totally agree. Like cholesterol is good as our friend. So um, you know, again. I really want to help encourage people to be their primary healthcare professional. If you need secondary, tertiary, you know, a chiropractor like yourself or an acupuncturist, that would be like secondary. And then tertiary would be like, you know, a medical doctor who's going to put you on drugs or be able to do surgery. If that's needed, that's part of medicine. But there's so many things that we could be doing ourselves. And so we don't want to just give that responsibility of our health and well-being to somebody else because who's going to love us more than we do? Yeah. And who lives in this body? So, um, 
you know, hot flashes seem to be such a big concern. And my personal experience with menopause is that hot flashes were more likely to happen when I was not expressing my truth. Like if I wanted to say something, but like I knew it was going to maybe cause discomfort or an argument, then the hot flashes would come. And in Asian medicine, they actually say hot flashes are liver fire rising. Okay. It's like the surge of heat coming up. So a couple of things we can do for hot flashes besides drinking lemon and water. Oh, that is so pretty. Remember the fans, yes. You have a little fan <laughs> with you. No wonder ladies, but you know, see, this is kind that of feels nice, good. right? You can it's get beautiful. pretty ones. This is from Vienna. Um, another thing is, this is so simple, an aromatherapy mister. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women say, oh, I like sweat in the middle of the night. And if you um, had a bottle, you can make your own eight ounces of spring water. You can spritz me. And maybe water. 20 drops of peppermint oil. Mmm, that's beautiful. And, and then you mist your face, close your mm -hmm. eyes and your mouth, uh, mist your chest, mm -hmm. you can mist your wrists. And, um, you know, ideally lavender or peppermint oil, maybe 20 drops each. And you can make a little mister and keep it by the bed. Um, keep it, you know, wherever you need it. Have one in your purse, your backpack, your desk. Um, it's really important to have these things. It feels so soothing. Yeah, and um, this one uh, is not those essential oils that I mentioned, but, like, it really could be anything that you like. Because the important thing is that it's pleasing to you. And, um, you know, there's herbs that are cooling that have a, a refrigerating property. They call them refrigerants, like a lemon balm and hibiscus and peppermint. So drinking teas like that and then, you know, minimizing. This might be a time in life where we n don't want to lay on the hot chili peppers and the, you know, cayenne and the garlic and onions. Those are really heating. And that might be good if you're feeling cold, but if you're really suffering from getting these blasts of heat. Um, and, you know, my feeling about menopause is to... Enter it with an air of curiosity rather than like freaking out like, oh my God, I'm hot or I, I had two periods this month or what is this like the 21 day period that, you know, just lasts, um, you know, rather than getting all upset about it, expect things to be different and to look at life and say, well, that's interesting. You know, it just kind of lightens it up because like a witness. Yeah. Expect the unexpected. Um, and then, you know, again, this is a time to, you know, be putting your affairs in order. But, you know, we have so many great herbs. I, I wasn't able to find any in flower, but, you know, the humble dandelion. You know, dandelion root is a really wonderful herb for detoxifying the liver, helping even to let go of old stored emotions in the body. We should not be spraying dandelions. If you are... You need to stop because that is an insult to the Earth Mother. And hey, we need to be kind to the Earth Mother. She is speaking out. The earth, the water, the fire, the air are erupting in so many ways. Dandelions are here for a reason. They actually help aerate the soil. We should be eating the greens and they're one of the first food for the bees in the springtime. So those little dandelion blossoms, we could be eating them. They're high in lutein, yeah, which yeah. is good for our eyes. You can eat the greens. I'm going to make a dandelion salad tonight with mm. my students. Um, and then you can also eat the root or make tea out of the root. Um, so we've been bamboozled by a lot of the huge corporations to think that, you know, all of your food has to come from a grocery store. It needs to have directions and a barcode and ink. But really, a lot of our food should be coming from our yard. So I'm a big advocate of creating edible lawns. Um, you know, so another thing, um, night sweats might happen. You know, night sweats, again, you've got your aromatherapy mister. But there is a wonderful herb called, this is sage. Okay. Salvia officinalis. Um, this is good for people who sweat profusely. Although, you know, I think that maybe our bodies are sweating to try to cool us off because sweating actually helps to relieve trapped heat. But if it really bothers you, you could drink um, several cups of sage tea a day. It's drying. Um, not enough to be used by nursing moms because it will dry up your milk, but it can also dry up excessive perspiration. Um, you know, another herb, I love this herb. Um, it's stinging nettles. Oh, yeah. Stinging uh -huh. nettles, which might sting you. As a matter of fact, I'd love you to um, keep this one and put it in water until it roots and then 
Oh, planted thank somewhere. You. But stinging nettle is so mineral rich. So one of the concerns about menopause is like, oh, what about my bones? Yeah. You know, how can we nourish our bones? Well, as you mentioned earlier, eat less sugar because sugar is an anti-nutrient that will take minerals out of our body. Um, and then, you know, eat plenty of calcium rich foods like green leafy vegetables. Kale is one of my favorites. Um, oats are high in calcium. Um, but I would also say nettle tea, and uh, even better is to do an infusion where you let the nettle steep mm -hmm. overnight. So you don't have to hold that because it also stings you. But. Oh, I love it. Okay, but um, and I am going to put it in water. Yeah, it'll get roots in a few yeah, days and wow. I'll plant it somewhere shady. But, um, you know, overnight infusions of herbs that are rich in minerals. And an overnight infusion, it's really a tea, but you put it in a ball jar um, the dried herb and then cover it to the top with hot water and let it sit overnight to really extract the maximum amount of properties from the herb. Um, which, her which herbs would you use? Well, I would think, you know, a great menopausal tea might be nettles. Um, horsetail is also good even for remineralizing bones that are have even become somewhat osteoporotic. Um, red clover blossoms is a same family as soy. Um, but red clover blossoms contains uh, phytoestrogens or plant hormones. Um, another one would be raspberry leaf, which is considered an ally for women. It's high in calcium, magnesium, iron. Um, and, you know, if you want to learn more about herbs, I've, you know, written this book called The I Sexual Herbal. It's, you know, it's got so much in there about, like, you know, uh, menopause, but also prostate health and fertility and menstrual health and... Uh, healing the spirit from a broken heart and the fine art of flirting and finding a mate or you know is it love or is it addiction you know, a lot of <laughs> topics and i think you know very often we think that um we know everything about sex because we've been sexually active for years or had you know several lovers or many lovers but um it's a topic that we can continue to learn about our whole life and so i also know that a lot of women uh, are concerned about vaginal dryness yeah and it would be wonderful if men were not uh, circumcised because they could help in producing um, some lubrication. So I know true. it's too late for uh, most of us and our partners. Our generation. Yeah, but I've been thinking I want to do a bumper sticker that says, save the foreskins. You know, like I read there with <laughs> save the rainforest. And yeah. Save the, save the foreskins. You know, I hear they actually make breathable bandages out of them. But anyways, it's a little too late what now nice. to do anything about it. But if we, um, you know, rather than like worry about um, lubrication, just have a little thing of coconut oil by the bed and, you know, you can get coconut oil. Um, it's edible. It's safe. Um, hopefully by menopause time, you're not so concerned about um, condoms if you found the partner you love. But if not, um, you might have to find another alternative. But, you know, you don't even have to be sexual to enjoy using coconut oil, just like we put lip balm on our lips, Absolutely. whether you're going to be kissing or not, you can lubricate your lower lips just to keep them juicy. And um, there's an herb that I'm actually drinking right here, thanks to my friend Cindy, mm -hmm. called Shatavari or asparagus root, which is a wonderful herb for women that have had hysterectomies. It really moistens the yin or helps to build the natural lubricating fluids in our body. So, um, you know, drinking herbal teas, chickweed would be another good one. Drink more water because, what, you know, if we don't drink enough, that's going to dry us out. Um, think about making your own salad dressing with extra virgin olive oil, eating more avocados. Don't worry about how many calories in an avocado. They also have lipase in them, which helps you to digest fat. So nature is so full of ways and remedies that can support us. And it's time for women to take some responsibility and, uh, you know, waiting for somebody to tell us what drug to take to say, look, there's books, there's support, there's holistic practitioners. We can learn about the plants in our backyard that really this kind of uh, medicine, you know, begins in our own homes, in our own kitchens, in our own yards. And um, it's time to stop giving them that power away like as if we couldn't possibly figure it out on our own. We're going to have some... You know, doctor who's maybe never gone through menopause, tell us what to do. As we've been taking care of it for millions of years, women have been dealing with it on their own, 
without taking some outside medications or chemicals or hormones. And um, uh, I completely agree. So, and then what about the loss of libido that some happened to so many women, you know? They just sort of lose their zest for life in all aspects. So, you know, sexual energy is extra energy. And if we're exhausted because we're staying up too late or we're, you know, partying too much or we're not eating healthfully, um, our bodies know, like, how, making a baby would not be a good idea. And, again, libido is really a gift trying to get us to procreate. So when it's not procreation time, you know, our libido is supposed to change. But, you know, I really think that um, this is a wonderful time for couples to explore other ways of connecting that are very close and intimate, like partner yoga or a couple's massage class. You know, certainly, you know, affection, holding hands, snuggling. But, um, you know, it may be that there's things, there are, I know there's things that can enhance libido. And according to the principles of Asian medicine, uh, our libido has a lot to do with the health of our kidneys. Um, and so eating more black colored foods like uh, black chia seeds, black olives, black rice, black beans, um, black seaweed, you know, the black colored foods, I don't mean, you know, something dyed black, but things that are naturally black, they have a lot of minerals in them. And so we want to nourish the water element of our body. And I also think, you know, looking and feeling good about our bodies. Like if we put on 50 pounds, we might not like feel like, you know, wearing sexy clothes. But um, I, another thing that I think gets in the way of libido is couples waiting to go to bed at like midnight and they're exhausted. They've yeah. been like falling asleep on the couch and now they're gonna crawl upstairs and go to sleep. It's like, you're gonna have leftover sex because all you have is leftover time. So, you know, the idea of putting some energy into it and maybe saying to your beloved, like, you know, tonight, no attachment, but let's have an early dinner and not, um, you know, stay up so late. Let's just go to our bedroom. And, you know, there's things you can do to, like, you know, clean sheets and nice music and essential oils and, um, you know, soft lighting and all that. And maybe it's that you're going to um, trade foot massages or snuggle or read to each other rather than, you know, both being on different tracks. Like, I'm reading James Michener and she's reading, you know, um, <laughs> Philippa Gregory or something <laughs> like that. Like, um, find some, like, uplifting things to read together. And then, you know, making love... Um, and even if it's like maybe having special nights like the full moon or the new moon or the eclipse or the change of the seasons. And so, yeah, don't be attached to, you know, well, Playboy magazine says we're supposed to do it 2.2 times a week or something. Um, it may be that it's really wonderful, you know, once a month or a couple times a month. Um, the word Tantra means weaving your lives together. So there's many ways that we can weave our lives together, like growing a garden together or decorating a home or planting, planning a party or making a meal. Um, but I think that it's that we've relegated or delegated sex to be like the last thing that we think of. And another thing that I think decreases libido is um, eating late at night. Like people will satisfy their hunger and their passion, and uh, you know, or eat, almost even stuffing it. Yeah, stuffing it. Like you know, uh, eating a pint of ice cream in from the freezer. That's going to cool your passion. Yeah. So save some hunger for your beloved. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, love is so important. It's a nutrient. It's it's, it's important as food. It's food for the spirit. And, you know, maybe think about taking a Tantra workshop with your partner or a couple's communication class because if you wanted to be really great at your profession, you would keep learning about it. And I think that after a while, we let our romantic relationship take last place. And uh, maybe this is a time if the kids are grown or they don't need so much attention or they're, they moved on to other pastures, um, then that really does allow more time. Or maybe it's time for starting a new relationship because we know that partners pass on or, you know, find a, another partner um, because we live longer or who knows. Um, 
you know, we get to choose our own partners, but it doesn't always work out. Um, so uh, it may be a time for starting over. And um, I think a really important thing is to, you know, love and honor yourself. And rather than looking for the right partner, um, focus on being the right person that someone would want to be with. So it's all a big adventure and we're here to learn as much as we can and um, do as much good as we can. And what a great experience to dance on this earth for however long we have. And um, I feel strongly that when we support natural medicine, we are uh, helping the, you know, the, the plants, the farmers, the forests, helping to keep all that alive. Oh, that's beautiful. Um... I love that you're sharing that message. Uh, we're even so disconnected from um, our food sources and um, and nature. And I feel as a result, our own nature. Um, mm. So I think anything that, um, like the plants that you bring, they have their own wisdom there. And eating plants, having plants like that, it sparks our own, you know, ancient wisdom. Um, you know, I just thought of another plant here. This one's called motherwort. And uh, motherwort, it actually has an interesting Latin name, Leonaris cardiaca. So the name tells you that it has a history of being used for the heart. But motherwort is also good for hot flashes. And um, it's a member of the mint family. And it makes a really good tea. Um, it's used for calming a racing heart and it can uh, minimize hot flashes. It's also good for sorrow. You know, like if we were having grief in our lives, this can be a tea that comforts us. So, um, you know, this whole thing with pharmaceuticals, it's relatively new. If we look at the history of humanity, That's right. don't let anybody tell you that the herbs haven't been properly tested because they've been used by millions of people for thousands of years. Yep. And to me, that is a lot more valid than a two year you know, rat study, which might have very little to do with the human body. Um, and so I feel um, usually when science does like validate something herbal, they're usually uh, validating something that people knew several thousand years ago. And I'll say, oh, they just learned that? Well, my grandmother was telling me that like when I was four. Um, so, and you know, her grandmother before that. It's amazing, you know, some of some of them escape being executed for practicing witchcraft uh, yeah. because that whole herbal tradition was very, very suppressed for, you know, several, you know, actually hundreds of several years, hundreds right? of years, yeah, between the 1400s and the 1700s, so. And, you know, really, plants are food, and pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals are medications, essentially chemicals. So that the cells of our body, um, our bodies react completely differently to a chemical as opposed to something natural um, in terms of assimilating, I mean, every aspect of it. So, Well, you know, initially, uh, you, can't, you can't patent a plant. So if I were to say, dandelion leaves are a very good diuretic. They help to get rid of excessive water in the body. Well, what pharmaceutical company is going to do a study on dandelion when people have them for free in their backyard? Exactly. Because it costs millions of dollars to introduce a new drug into the marketplace. So what companies do in order to recoup their research um, and production is they um, either take one component of the plant, like they'll extract what they think is the active ingredient. But plants aren't like that. They're more than just the active alkaloid. It's not just taraxacine. It's like, you know, essential oils and chlorophyll and beta carotene and magnesium and zinc. And so when we remove all that from the plant and just use an alkaloid, it doesn't work the same. And as you were saying, our bodies don't recognize it as like nourishment. And I think a lot of it is trying to protect patents on plants. Whereas really, you know, you can't improve upon what nature's doing. And when you think of like the strength of a plant that can, uh, you know, survive the cold winter and then come up on its own yeah. without anyone planting it, fertilizing it, weeding it, watering it, it thrives. These are survivors. And I feel that in this polluted world, one of the answers for our future is we're going to learn to adapt. We have to, because it's not like all the radiation and the chemtrails and the chemicals in the water are going to go away. They're, they're here. 
And so just as the weeds adapt and have this avatar quality of, of struggling for survival and overcoming adversity, by learning to use these humble plants is going to help us to be um, more avatar-like. Yeah, the, well, the plants are innately intelligent, just like our bodies are. So mm -hmm. they're in harmony. How are we doing on time? I think we need to wrap it up. Okay. Um, anything else you would like to share or add? I would love for people to know how to contact you and about the work, the good work that you're doing, the great work. I so respect Brigitte. Thank you. Well, um, it's your easy. weed walks I've been on, they are amazing if you're lucky enough to be in Boulder. Well, I, yeah, I teach all around the planet. So um, you can find me at BrigitteMars.com, B-R-I-G-I-T-T-E, Mars, like the planet, .com. And um, I have a YouTube station with lots of little tutorials and like 14 books. So check it out because um, we don't have time to waste. We need to get on this and make the world better and healthier. And we're going to do a much better job if we feel great so we can all work together. So we need you. Thank you. Many blessings. Thank you, Juicy Goddesses.